later on today. Both of these, of course, being best of three series. So excited to be here. Definitely some great Han once again is set to happen ahead of us here. And can't wait to see who our eventual Cycle 5 champion is. It's either going to be a repeat of complexity for what would be the third time or possibly BMG or Sync, which would be their first year in terms of Han Tour Season 4 Cycle victory. So again, a lot can happen and excited to be here. So let's get into it. With that said, I'm joined by my co-cast and today joined once again by Shorkan here. How's it going, man? It's uh, going good. I mean, after yesterday's games, I'm excited to see what happens because, uh, like, anything can happen. You were saying before, like, BMG and Sync have still not gotten the cycle victory, but with how they're looking, anything is possible. Absolutely. I mean, it really, as things have just generally been for a competitive scene, I, I do not know what to expect. Yes, being in the winter bracket or the grand finals already, obviously there is the advantage of that. You get to kind of sit back now. You, you don't have to worry about playing the earlier match, especially for a team like Complexity being North American here. But uh, at the same time, it is just a straight up best of three. So, you know, you got you to gotta take care of business once that comes to it. So really anyone can win this here no doubt so here we are in this match though game one of our first series uh we definitely got a draft to talk about here so let's get into it we got the initial bands that was wild soul tremble riptide and dr repulsor interesting they're not a typical band hero um midas and a parasite puppet master into luna deadlift coming out here into more axis but yeah well, well, what's going on here um well the craziest thing behemoth hasn't been picked yet True. And B BMG is picking Deadlift, which I have also not seen. So, I, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know why they'd third pick it when they're already against a... Um, when Zlap's already got Parasite for him. But yeah, the the Doctor Repulsor, I think, is just due to Balthazar playing that hero so well. And then, in turn, you have Puppet Master, because Haxrin is known to play that hero quite a lot. So, they get rid of that for him. Mm-hmm. Yes, the deadlift really is interesting, as you point out with that third pick. Uh, now, against Parasite, we actually talked a little bit about the potential of it yesterday. That onslaught can actually be a little bit of a nuisance for Parasite, so there is that. But Moraxis in response picked up. He is fantastic against deadlift. Obviously, yeah. because the Arcane Shield, he can just use it if uh, he sees one in the way to either jump in front of somebody or just catch it himself. So, um, yeah, a little... A little risky, maybe, for BMG to yeah. get a third pick deadlift here. But there's also the idea that they don't want it banned. Because I sure. Sync has been known. They, they banned it themselves as well, so they really want to secure that pick. But, yeah, we're just going to have to wait and see. Because Moraxis might be suicide or he might be mid. It, and then, then we still don't know whether deadlift is jungle or suicide either. Yeah. So we have to wait and see for those things. Because, I mean... If you have deadlift um, in the jungle, he can gank mid as well as the short lane. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, he, then he just ganks the lane where Moraxis isn't. And if he's suicide, he's left with one option pretty much, and that's the Moraxis himself. Yes. If the Moraxis is in mid. <laughs> it's pretty funny, though. I have, um, what was it? I uh, saw Teltuk playing a Team M game versus me. He was playing the um, artillery full support with deadlift in the jungle. And oh my god, oh my god, so, it was so annoying. Yeah, a lot of range right there, I would yeah, imagine. But <laughs> they're not going to end up doing that, though. I, you, maybe, you never know. You never no, know. No, 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 <laughs> Probably not. Not this game. Unless it's an artillery middle. That's still an option. Yeah, that, that could be. <laughs> god, that would be out there. But no, I, uh, that's, that's an interesting synergy, though. I never really thought about that. You just you aren't in danger from getting counter initiated on because they don't even see you. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, hell, you get like an Artesia in there as well. With the, oh yeah, the of course. We're, we're talking about this crazy <laughs> unique lineup, man. <laughs> Possibilities it, are endless. It, it does feel kind of like okay, so they're picking Arachna. I'm assuming that's going to be a short lane. I at least I think so because I mean. Arachna is great middle, but they can still rotate more people to middle, and then Arachna is still going to die, I think. But yeah, Arachna also happens to be really good against deadlift because of the hard yeah. pace. So yeah, this game goes back to that third pick deadlift, and 
it's given time now for Sync to be able to respond now. At the same time, you don't want to overdo it. Not that, you know, Arachna and Moraxis are bad pickups by any mean, but, you know, it's not that's not the only hero in the game, of course. But, yeah, I, I do like Arachna. I, I've, I've always thought ever since the changes, Arachna has kind of been a hero that was going to be kind of the sleeper hero, as they put it. And I think we've seen that to an extent. We definitely, see, In fact, BMG loves to run it themselves from time to time. Um, most noticeably here. There we so. go. Okay, there's the gauntlet. Fox is going to get his hands on it again. It's going to be a jungle deadlift then, in the yep. hands of Teltuk. Yes. And Midas, suicide, gauntlet middle. But that's not going to be great for Boxy if he ends up being against the Arachna if they choose to go for a semi carry top now. Mm -hmm. All right, so. I'm not sure about the Hellbringer pick here. No. They know it's a jungle deadlift, and Hellbringer is so easy to gank with deadlift. Huh. Yeah, that's true. But Zibe is playing it. So maybe not middle. <laughs> I think it, I think it might be a short lane. I think they're going aggressive with Moraxis, Aluna, Parasite aggressive, Arachna solo, and Hellbringer solo. Hellbringer solo top and Arachna solo middle. That can make sense. Yeah. Because Hell, yeah, I think Hellbringer does do quite well versus a suicide Midas. Just spamming out the W, getting some damage in there. Yeah. But we'll have to wait and see. We're gonna have to see what is what Zlap is picking up. If he gets boots, then we know. That really is interesting with that final pick, because yeah, they, I mean they could have had the lanes with the Arachna middle even, then the Moraxis suicide, and that would have taken care of the idea of Deadlift being in the jungle, and wouldn't be easy to gank. But yeah, go on the Hellbringer. They really wanted that, and as you pointed out, you know they are gonna go for more of that carry Arachna here. With Hacken. yeah, I am kind of confused how they're gonna like. I, I understand they don't want to man up versus a Puppet Master because nobody wants to do that. It's absolutely terrible to do. Mm -hmm. you, you'll you lose, pretty much. I mean, remember um, ECX used to run Puppet Master in the aggressive lane as well with a support in tri lanes even. Yeah. Oh, Make? Yeah, you don't want to go too far here, Make. <laughs> he's, uh, he's tempting fate. He's going to eventually see it, though. And there are the taunts coming yeah. out, so... Oh yeah, interesting. So Moraxis has a hatchet. Okay, so he's not... What is going on here? Yeah, they're all five up here. Obviously, they're starting to break away now. What are they going to be doing here? Okay, Moraxis middle. I think that's uh, for certain. And it... Are they going to man up with Hexron? The... What is going no, on Hexron's here? No, Hexron's middle, it looks like. Yeah. It's okay, this... then it has to be... It's what? Suicide Moraxis, but why the hatchet? The hatchet, there? yeah. Oh, he's and Parasite there. is going to stay here. He Okay, he's going to get a quick chalice. Huh. So so they do it. Well, you know what? I brought up, they do the Suicide Moraxis. They do the rack in the middle. So, I mean, I guess, yeah, it really makes that Hellbringer pick up that much more of a little, huh. <laughs> and now Boxy and Fusen playing the same combo uh, as yesterday. With the Rhapsody? Yeah. Ver what was it versing? Uh, I think it was versus the Hellbringer. It was versus Fresh, obviously. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to remember the exact matchup. Yeah. yeah. can't recall exactly, but uh, they, they did pretty well eventually, I do remember. So, And yeah, Boxy again. Fusen's great at standing still. Allowing uh, <laughs> Boxy to... Are we going to talk about this yeah. again? <laughs> we are. He's going to do it again. So uh, I'm thinking more about this Hellbringer. And so, okay, if this was a decision to lay it like this, you know, may maybe a lot of the logic comes down to they knew, of course, Midas was going to be up here, or they figured that. So they wanted a hero that's strong against Midas. And Hellbringer, I think you could argue, is definitely but that. So Arachna is, all is also strong versus uh, Midas true. just by harassing him out. But it goes down to the fact that they are scared of the deadlift ganks if yeah. they send a helping in middle. Yeah. Well, you're right there. Yeah, I guess I, I'm also thinking of the hero pool. And, like, what else is there that would be good against a deadlift gank? Because the Arachna and Moraxis are two of the obvious ones, but there maybe isn't a whole lot else that's... Yeah. ...comes to mind, so... Well... Maybe like a, I maybe guess like a gauntlet. <laughs> or swift blade, yeah. is good. And Predator could work as well, but I mean, who wants to run Predator in the suicide lane? Or yeah, in the middle? In the middle, yeah. But it's like heroes like that, just either with like uh, purging a debuff or I think with a very reliable quick escape. 
Well, again, they, they go with this, so we'll see how, how it works out for them. Obviously, you know, we did see Fuzzy Sloth yesterday in Complexity in that uh, third and final game, actually, you know, getting a great farm on a Hellbringer and definitely was able to do work with it. You, you know, got the eventual Resto Stone after getting a lot of buildup. You know, I think it's like a Sack Stone and a Tablet even, so... Um, and Zimmy, of course, played it here. That's worth mentioning, too. Obviously, I see people even bring it up. Right? I mean, Keizu was here yesterday ringing for Sync Esports, but uh, Zimmy is back, of course. And as mentioned, you know, that's never was different. He just simply wasn't here yesterday. So, uh, But he's back for today on Championship Sunday, as we can call it here. So, <laughs> Yeah, bottom lane is not going to be fun for Masara, by the way. No. Because um, they can always initiate with a puppet show, and Marcera hasn't put any wards up. He doesn't have any wards. So Deadlift can gank this really easily, just from fog, and then, I mean, I don't think Marcera is going to be able to respond fast enough if he has to deal with a puppet show as well. Mm -hmm. Top lane. A little bit of back and forth right here. I don't know if a kill's coming out of this, but again, just simply pushing him back, letting him know that he has control of the lane right now, at least. Just continue to keep an eye on that as it picks up. But gonna pop the health potion right there. I think he wants to jump on him. Might he is. should just harass more. Yeah. Because helping has no more region. Oh, but here comes delivered. the bottle. Yeah. Yeah. And now he does. Yeah, Hellbringer not the greatest at grabbing runes necessarily. No, he doesn't have that, you know, extra yeah. speed burst. Burst of speed, excuse me, or like a teleport ability, so. But I mean, it's it's not the worst thing in the world to just get a bottle and then have it, and then in case you're running by, because I mean, in the short lane right now, it doesn't look like he's going to be getting runes anyways, unless he truly pushes that pushes us out far. Mm -hmm. Look at this, by the way. Again. Wow. Yeah, he's going aggressive on, and somebody's going to die but right I here. Think, I think Midas is going to. Yeah, Midas oh, missed. Oh, he missed. If he hits that oh. elemental warp, I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe something. Both but... instances. It does 160 damage, and I mean, I don't think Zebi would have survived that, but just good play by him being able to dodge that. Mid lane, by the way, Teltuk is. Uh... He's trying. He wants to get the kill. But no. he's invis. The, the creep started spawning around him. Yeah. Even when he was invis. I was like... just about to mention that. Yeah, it's he's not really the greatest invis hero. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of give it away. It's like it's like back in the day when Zephyr's Cyclones showed yeah. up when uh Oh Parasite oh, though. This is interesting. Yeah, Parasite's coming in as well. Now, Gauntlet is gonna hit Serenity, and Serenity will fall for that kill right there, but now the Parasite wants to get that turn kill, he will get it. Slapped coming in for it. You do see Arachna also falling back. Now Deadlift trying to chase, but I don't think it's gonna be enough in the end. Yeah, Parasite survives and one for one. That Zink is happy with the death grip. Oh my god, it hit, but it's not enough damage still, so... Yeah. Oof, that was scary. Good job, though, with the turn, though. That, that just happened to be the right time there for Parasite. Mm -hmm. So... But I, the one negative thing about Deadlift is that he just... The hero can't farm, and Aluna... Is she in trouble again? She sure is, that death grip, and then death the easy grip, hook. Yeah. That's... You know, that prisoner, obviously, combination that we talk about. Of course, Gauntlet's great at that, too. Give that still mm -hmm. standing target and sets up an easy kill as a result. Yeah, I mean, I am kind of curious as to why they're running a Luna in the mid lane with against the Gauntlet. And he's maxing his hook again, I think. Uh, yeah, he's going to 2 2. He actually doesn't have any in Feeble, which yeah, is what he definitely It makes did. sense. Yeah. Like this time, he's not versus one guy, he's versus two, so they want maximum range and maximum burst. But top lane, I think yeah. Midas is dead. Whoa, <gasps> no, just enough life right He there. might be able to turn it. If the leech is off cooldown, careful. though. Careful. Yeah, this is this is tempting fate right here. Now, he's going to take over the soldier, actually. And he's going to try to chase, but good job by Maki going the other way. And I think, yeah, he is going to buy the distance here. So, let's watch it the whole time. They dove that tower pretty heavy right there for the kill, but did a good job of surviving it staying alive so but the top oh, yeah. farm in the game right now is that puppet master but you know it does drop off a bit here for bmg but botstar is having a good time bottom lane at least but aluna's transitioned bottom now so you're mentioning yeah that. and the main problem with deadlift jungle right now is that he just he can't farm fast like it's really going really slow it's been five minutes ten and I'm, i mean he's gone two ganks off but He's only 200 GPM level 4, whereas Parasite, he's almost level 6, I think. Mm -hmm. 
looking at him while halfway to six from five. But yeah. Oh, there comes a death grip. This should be a kill right here. Look at the web shots. He's like, get off me. Oh my god, it is going to be enough. You know, the great thing about that, literally uh, like 10 seconds before, he actually got hooked. Oh, and here we go with Malphus coming down. Boxy and Fusion in trouble. Boxy running to the right right here. Malphus in pursuit. You see Parasite coming in, and that is an awkward pause as we have potential for a bit of action right here. I'm guessing somebody DC'd on their side. Oh, it's a bit crashed, apparently. I, uh, well, at least he was able to do a bit of work right here. So <laughs> it came at, at a fairly decent time, I guess you could say. But yeah, that's well, good that they I that. wonder if his lap is going to do a good job standing still because Boxy has his hookup. <laughs> Is his left. Oh, if he's going to hook to him and then try to make a get away from there. Yeah, I think he can. Yeah, that's very possible. Or his teammate. There's, another, there's, a, right there. there's also a death grip available on uh, Mr. Uh, Teltuk. Of course, he has to not get stunned by Serenia, which yeah. Serenia will, of course, too. As funny as this, as this may sound, I mean, this posture for the Hellboy team, uh, it, this actually is probably helping BMG a little bit more because it is giving Boxy now time to maybe think about what they want to do here as far as who he wants to hook. and. You know, it's yep. obviously just unfortunate that he happened to crash right there, but it's uh, we'll see how they do coming out of this, though. I mean, the hook is level three, yeah. so it's 180 magic damage. He might be able to, they might be able to kill the parasite with just a couple of auto attacks because four seconds until the leech. That could happen. We'll see if they figure they're uh. confident enough for the turn. You know, I was gonna say though, before this took place here. They actually hooked Arachna, and they comboed him with the staccato stuns, the the uh, infernal instability and everything, but he survived it. I mean, that Harden Carapace came out, and again, you can just tell it's it's level, uh, it's still level one, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's level one, but still uh, able to get that off, and it just mitigates so much damage. He was able to survive that, and then he eventually survived the after, as we saw. So Arachna really proven to be a pretty strong, uh, so many other heroes just would have died right there. Yeah. And it's because he also picked up the steam boots and everything. Like he he's not the squishiest hero to take down. I mean, the easiest hero to take down. Yeah. I I would like to see him put two levels in hardened carapace though, just because of the fact you can get rid of any stun. Yeah, you can remove the staccatos here and. But during case. the stun itself. Mm -hmm. yep. So when you're stunned, also the um, infernal instability when that comes out from gauntlet. I mean, gauntlet blast. No, it's it's something that he's eventually going to get. Yeah, it's just a matter of when. He feels like maybe it's not necessary right now, but yeah, he he should at least he should probably you can argue I think getting it at level seven. Uh, you know, yeah. obviously ultimate level six, but I mean all his abilities are just fantastic. With um, Arachnus Q not being a uh, modifier anymore, yeah. that's that was so you thing. can get life steal. Yeah, they've buffed this hero a bit over time. I mean, the web shot used to just be a web shot. And it was an attack modifier, meaning that it just slowed, I believe. It didn't even do damage for the longest time, so... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now, 16 damage per second, it slows attack speed, and 40% movement speed. Yeah. No, it's pretty damn good. Um, but yeah, no... Should, go ahead. should Balthazar port to middle, by the way? Because, uh... I mean... Shit is gonna go down. <laughs> well, he doesn't have a TP yet. It's gonna take him at least two yeah. seconds to get over here. And then four seconds to port, yeah, or so 3.5, I don't know. I don't know. If he had a TP on him right now, if he could just do it right away, then maybe. But yeah, I think with him having to go over to the shop, it might not be worth it. Yeah. But he should look to port early on in this game, just because he's a puppet master, he can do so much damage. Here we go. One second, there we go. What is Boxy? You know, I was just about to say, too, I feel like so many of these times, it's actually Taltuk is in trouble, but Boxy nope. is going to save him, so never mind. Oop, the power of the missing right there, but... Wouldn't have been enough anyways. Um, Malphus still ever I mean, we know this. Malphus, he's, he's a little dangerous. He's only level one Malphus right now, but he still will burn you down. You see how much scared they are of it, as they should be. Everyone's just running away. <laughs> They're just getting away from it. Um, and it looks so it looks so silly. I mean, look at the look at the thing run. It's it's like hopping. It's just like, it's like when yeah, you're <laughs> waddling along. Uh, yeah. Going for it's like scroll. when uh, Myrmidon getting the ultimate top lane. Parasite. Nice. Trouble. Can he get away from this one? Oh, nice transmute from Maki right there. Might not matter in the end, though. That death blow connects and. Uh, is it going to be enough? I think so. Nope. Bottle charges? It's not enough. Down he goes. That death boil will do some good yep. damage to you. A demonic wave, as it's technically called. We know 
the, the death that, boil. He is uh, maxing his demonic wave instead of the Q, and I like his decision. Mm -hmm. He's able to push faster with it, and he won't get the two charges until level 9, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. So again, you see this middle matchup here. Gauntlet really here comes not Death able to get a whole lot. Is Death Group coming out? Aluna? Oh, he tried. What is he doing? He's charging it up, I guess. <laughs> or he, he didn't want to show it in that case, I think. They kind of fell yeah. back and said, like, what's the but point? So. He's still level 4 now. Mm -hmm. This is really not going great for him. Like, I think his lapped farms really fast on him, but at the same time, his lapped only just got level 6. Yeah. No, but, he, I mean, it, yeah. I, I, know we, I know we kind of talked about this a little bit yesterday. Again, it, it, I know that this girl's really annoying and everything, and it, it, the Q is pretty damn powerful, but his win percentage is really not that great. And I think this is one of the biggest reasons we're seeing right here, is that they get so caught up in trying to gank, which they kind of have to, because that's just kind of how the hero Puppet works master. with the farm. But if he misses a lot, then it's not going to work. Now, Puppet Master bottom lane, the Spider Sting is out. He's going to die right here for sure. Uh, they uh, are then going to just walk off. You see Deadlift, he couldn't really do much at that point. So, Arachna coming in for the gank. That wasn't even a rune or anything, I don't think. Yeah, it was. was it, it was an Invis rune. Oh, yeah. well, that makes a lot more sense then. And, and now Deadlift is dead. Teltic. I, I think. Uh, or not. Grip. Yeah, he's going to survive, actually. Let's and see. Gauntlet incoming. Hook. Is he going to go? Range? Yep. It is. Nice, right, stun. Yeah. There. there we go. So they get something out of it. Did that lose taunt is so though. loud. My god. Yeah, the baby Top lane. Yeah. Midas might be in some trouble. They're going in for the kill. Is uh, Malfus up? Malfus is up. Yep. Double damage rune on Hellbringer as well. This is very likely a dead Midas right here. Spider Sting is up in 20. So <laughs> not going to be necessarily here, but... Oh. Well, I guess if he hugs the tower, I mean, he knows something's up. Four people are up here. To dive this tower. Wow. Yeah, they really want him dead. Oh, they want the tower at least, I'm sure. But... I think he's going to die. Oh, there we go. <laughs> he's just standing there, and all of a sudden, hell rains down from the skies. He's like, what is going on? It's the apocalypse. And What is going on with these pauses? Oh. Mm. Well, that's unfortunate. Oh, they're going to uh, the tower, most likely, but middle lane? What's going on here? No, more access is fine. Well, he might die. Um, oh yeah, Gauntlet does have his ultimate. Now you need to be careful with that because of the Arcane Shield, of course. Yeah, if he's uh, sitting there spamming his... Uh... If I were Boxy, cancel the cast on the uh, Gauntlet Blast. Yeah. Oh, and then, yeah. Sure, like, yeah. yeah, and then wait for that and then try for Big Hook. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, they're making a point that, and that's true. The last time he used Malphus as well, he DC'd. So <laughs> that's that's a little unfortunate. I know. I don't know if I've ever heard a <laughs> before, but they are so broken. Yeah. Uh, but I've never heard of that happening before either. Yeah, that's. It has been coincidence here, though. So hopefully that doesn't keep happening, or that would be pretty weird to kind of have to deal with. And frustrating to cast. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, so he but, can uh, use Malphus five or four more times this game, because that's how many pauses they have left. Yeah, pretty much. In the game. They only have one more pause themselves, so that's a few yeah, so, is willing I mean, to pause. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, Parasite is not going for uh, Puzzle Box this game, which I kind of understand versus a deadlift, but at the same time, I find it so invaluable. Like, yeah. If he were, if he's able to jump the puppet master and, you know, get vision of him because of the pup, the puzzle box, it's gonna end up as a kill. Yeah. It's yeah, as you point out, I think the deadlift is kind of that is, is the obvious deterrent here, if anything, for slap. But yeah, there's definitely argument to be made that it could still be useful. Now that's actually another interesting thing that uh, kind of just realizing too is that Malphus can be controlled by the onslaught as well. I mean, just any any kind of minion in general. So. Uh, you know, I don't know if that's, you know, a, a huge reason to not pick up a Helberg no. by any means against Deadlift, but that's something to keep in mind. It's not the biggest deal because it's a, uh, it's only 50 auto attack damage. The damage comes from the balls of fire that fly from Malphus constantly. Yeah. That That's where the danger really comes from with that hero. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, with that creature, with that creep, with that summon. It is. Oh, Arachnid. Yeah. Oh, it just ran off. About to hit him, but again, he has a hearty carapace anyway, so 
probably wouldn't have mattered there. He's still on the level one Arden Carapace, and this kind of does go back to the idea of uh, I do wonder, you know, how comfortable Hax is with this hero. Not that he's never played it before by any means, but, you know, he probably hasn't played it a whole lot, at least on the competitive side of things. So, um, you know, we, we let's just say we've seen it before where a player, if things have kind of been changed, may not have realized it until after the game. So I'm not saying he doesn't know about the level two Harden Carapace, but it's possible. Maybe maybe he doesn't care enough. He, the only reason to use it is to uh, cancel the deadlift queue, and if he manages that, then he's fine. True. He's safe from danger. Mid lane. Or Axe is going in now. It's actually something triggered his Arcane Shield, but oh my god, he's going to get turned on big time. Beautiful Gauntlet Blast from Boxy right there. That was a big reason for that. Actually used it in the Hellbring of the background, Death that's stunning him as well. Death Grip is going to just be out of range. The tablet from Zebe coming through right there. So, But yeah, great turn from this Legion team here. On to uh, the more axis. Yeah, I don't know what triggered his, his uh, Arcane Shield, but he felt un invincible when he when he got it triggered. Yeah. And I just charged in. Death Grip. Yep. <laughs> Parasite jumping into a creep, not feeling safe enough. Yeah. I mean, I can only imagine the havoc it's going to create when um, Boxy gets a PK. And can just hook someone from, uh, yeah, at the same distance that Death Grip goes. Yep. We see Parasite over here is waiting for that. Nope, not the top rune. It's still 30 more seconds, so. It seemed like that the teams were doing that, but never mind there. Revelation put down in the middle lane, looking for some Ward of Sights here at BMG. But as we see, not uh, any Ward of Sights to be had currently, at least. Yeah. The warding right now is very... It's very limited from Sync. It's only the one ward in the lane, and I mean the one that just ran out. So they need to really try to get some more vision in it right now because they are giving space for Puppet Master to farm. He did go to Whispering Helm, so he is trying to go for late game. Mid lane. Yeah, protected melody coming out of the stomp there, though. Boxy getting stunned to fall. There's Malphus now coming in as well. And down goes Gauntlet in the end. You do see Balthazar on the run. He is in trouble right here. He is going to be fine, though. Also, Maki, the same story. Trying to get away. The Spider Sting is on him, though. Death Grip will connect on a Zibby there. In the background, that Spider Sting. Look at the slow on Maki. He just can't get away. And Malphus just may very likely kill him. It's not going to in the end, but it got one auto attack away, actually, before finally Maki was able to escape right there. But, uh, you know, Hellbringer and Moraxis going down as well in favor of BMG there. So it ends up being a two for two, actually. Oh, here comes the Death Grip. Yeah, there's a rack now, but the immediate hard and care phase. Yeah. All right, so um, huh. I really expected Sync to take that fight just because they were able to get the gauntlet down that quickly, but, I mean, they just played it a bit too well. Puppet Master also started attacking the spider thing and stuff. They were trying to work as a team, and Fusen with that Rhapsody ulti was insane. He he stopped Moraxis from bursting down gauntlet faster and then ended up, he dodged the Moraxis stun by stopping his own ultimate. And that way he was able to turn it around by using the stun on Masera. Oh, that was pretty clutch then. Yeah. Deny the middle tower. Yep. And, and that ward in mid lane by Serenia is just out of sight for the rev ward, I think. Uh, oh, this rev ward here, yeah. Oh, yeah. wow, yeah, it's just on the outside of the radius. Unfortunate there, but... Well, that's good for Serenia, of course, and BM or Sync Esports here. Able to use that for its site. But taking a look at things like portal key situations, you got Massera 1320 now, gold saved up. So he is starting to recover a little bit. Again, he was that suicide, uh, more access down here at the bottom lane. Really kind of a one versus one, but did have the deadlift in the lane. And again, Puppet Master pretty strong. And so, Puppet Master. <laughs> so yeah. can't really blame him there. I mean, he did get last hits by using his uh, axes, I'm sure. And that's why he's got 220 GPM, if anything. Yeah. Um, and he had a hat. I still find it strange he had a hatchet, though. I mean, it helps him last it a little bit, but he just gets wrecked by a puppet master anyway, so. Yeah. Axes are the only way, I think. It makes me wonder if he just thought he had a different matchup for some reason, but, you know, what would he have had that would have been, like, Midas would have been, yeah, but he still would be pretty tough, so. Yeah. It yeah. really have made sense in the end either, but. He preferred it there, and again, he's he's on his way to the Portakey now, 1,500 gold saved up. Arachna's kind of the interesting one for me. Again, especially being played in this short lane farming role, technically. He has 1,900 gold saved up. I feel like he can definitely go many different routes here. Um, 
Being Haxorin, you know, kind of being the role here, something tells me maybe the Firebrand into eventual Geometer. Yeah, even, but... maybe even a Lightning. Uh, Thunderclaw? Yeah. Or if he wants, yeah, Thunderclaw, but if he wants to gank, then he's going to go for a Shroud, I think. See, that's where it's tough. I mean, Arachna isn't yeah. really the strongest farmer, but at the same time, that that's kind of why I've said throughout. Now, with their new precision, I do think there is a lot of validity to actually making her a hard carry now. But even before that especially, I've always felt that she should be played as more of a kind of a secondary carry, more of this the aggressive ganker. But, um, you know, unlike a Puppet what? Master, you can get the Assassin Shroud. Again, Arachna doesn't really have a great farming tool. Yeah. And, I mean, that's I think Puppet Master and Arachna are very similar heroes. They both have the ability to go around and gank people. But Puppet Master just has that, you know, built-in farming ability with the Whiplash. And that's the biggest difference. And that's why Puppet Master is picked more often than not. Than, a, than an Arachna, I yeah. think. Oh, well, the red's down here in the middle lane. Five seconds, but protected oh. Melody. I feel like Fuston's been on top of these so much lately. And actually now on the run, Malphus does come out. But look at the Gauntlet Blast. Hasted Golly He's like, I'm out of here. Not much I can do for my teammate. Fuston Congor? Uh, not going to happen. He, he tried, but comes up short. Now, what do you think about it, though? I mean, essentially a Malphus and three heroes used four heroes even to just kill the support uh, Rhapsody yeah. right there. So BMG not too uh, disappointed there. Oh my god, is he going to go back in? He has a DD. But I really like what Serenia has done, by the way. He maxed his stun before his uh, power throw. Oh yeah? Get that yeah, so he's going to... Like, that's why he was able to get the 5 second stun on Boxy in the first place. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, very good setup right there from him. And again, did it result in the gauntlet kill, but at least they got something out of it. On the bright side there. The portal key now on Gala. They're going for the bottom lane, by the way. Hellbringer, but again, look at that tablet. That's safe to say that's why he got that tablet ASAP. He even went the Striders first. He wanted that tablet of command for that reason right there. It is pretty good against Deadlift. But Gauntlet is just walking down here repeatedly, and he's walked through uh, through Rune Ward Vision the entire time. So he's yep. dead. He sure is. Killed a Gravestone. They do right away. Yeah, he ran right through a couple of wards right here, as you're pointing out. Giving Vision, so... Ends up being an easy kill for Sync, so that that just new purchased portal key not really doing a whole lot right there, unfortunately. And uh, we do see the Thunderclaw on Haxer, and so he is going the route if I want to be able to farm and be the eventual hard carry in the late game style. So his his ganking is going to be nerfed a little bit because of this, but again, it, it makes sense. It was one way or the other, and this yeah. just happens to be the way he chose. I think it's great though for his puppet master if he's able to get into position. And use the spider sting. Have and if Arachna also has a shrunken, then Puppet Master. The only thing he can do is run. Mm -hmm. He has to try and get away, or at least have people attacking the spider so he can eventually man up or something. And until Puppet Master has a symbol, and like I don't know, a symbol plus a shrunken head, he's gonna get targeted down by Arachna every single time before he gets anything off. You know, Arachna. You can really argue actually the attack speed. It's Unlike before, the precision, the, the way the new precision works, it's actually a lot more relevant where attack speed's a little more powerful for, for her now. The fact, you know, the less life they have, the more she's able to sit on somebody do those auto attacks, the more mm -hmm. damage she really just does. So, you know, kind of like the, the madman idea where if he's sit on, sitting on you and the more attacks he does, the more damage he'll add up to be, you know, that kind mm -hmm. of idea. So, yeah, okay. I guess it also does kind of help the gank there a little bit. And speaking of gank... Oh, boy, yeah, this can this. also happen though. <laughs> oh, Killing geez. yourself. <laughs> can he not level two? I don't think so. He must I don't think to. so. Uh, Puppet Chill is such a weird ability because yeah. it's a it's it's like taunt from yeah. Legionary. You can't purge it or shrunken or out of it or anything. It's in really its frustrating. Own kind of crowd control. Yeah. And here goes Serenia. I caught that at the top lane. Maki got picked off. We do see Serenia also getting picked off. However, so a two for one ultimately in favor of the Legion side right here. And now they're going to push this middle secondary. You see the Onslaught coming out from Teltuk. And vulnerability was used, but ends up being the easy tower kill shortly after. And all of a sudden, BMG actually has a slight lead here. It's It's been around a 2,000 gold leader stuff for Sync, so nothing massive, but it's now kind of going a little bit for BMG. Yeah. It's yeah. Only 20 minutes in. But Maka is doing a great job for, of creating space. I mean, he, he died all the way at the top lane, but... It's it's because I mean he needs to be there. That he's the only one who can farm there. Puppet Master will just get targeted. Will just get ganked. And talk about Puppet Master actually. He's right in the ward vision. But Moraxis, mm. wow, that timing. Yeah. They, like 
I don't know, but that that felt almost, like they didn't have any vision there, the Legion side, and then he just ran away just perfectly ran. on time. It really seems uh, sometimes that, it kinda... seemed like he had god vision. <laughs> it really did. We're, we're not accusing them of cheating here, but it's, it's something <laughs> that was that was some really really great spider senses there. Yeah, yeah that was like I should not be doing this. <laughs> it's just like happened to be that split moment. He's just like thinking to himself, you know what? They might be coming for me. I'm gonna run now, and they just happen to be right there, ready to go. <laughs> and and Cerny is probably going to think like, oh, they probably have another ward because yeah. he's got the one rev ward there. Did he just place that? I think he, he did. He did. He did. Very recently. <laughs> here, so. It's understandable. He thought there's something there. And obviously, as we see, there's there's not actually. It just happened to be coincidence. So. Um, good. But yeah, look at his farm. I mean, Puppet Master, 530 co per yeah. minute. Deltas After that exploding. gank on Arachna, it's just going out of control. He's got his holy trinity of items now, too. The Shrunken, the Whispering Helm, and the Assassin Shroud. At least I saw the Shrunken. Yeah, the Courier's coming out here, so going to have that. He's going to be level 16 soon. I mean, so many things looking good. In fact, Arachna going down top lane. Things just get better for yeah. the Legion side. There's just too much lockdown. And Boxy's ultimate, of course, cancels the Hardened Carapace if the Hardened Carapace is up before because it purges. Oh, good point. Yeah, you got to be careful when using that. Against Gauntlet. That's, like, that actually makes me wonder if they. No, that was a final. No, they had Arachna before the Gauntlet fifth pick, so maybe there was a little bit there yeah. too. But I mean, Gauntlet was just a good pick in general because of the setup with Midas and with Deadlift and. Oh, look at this. Hellbringer. Yep. Yeah, he's going to find. <laughs> God! He That's nearly so one insane. shot him. That was insane oh. damage. Yeah, I mean, this is what. We saw it yesterday as well. They, uh, Haxorin was actually the one running around with the Puppet Master trying to get pickups like this, but it was not working for him. But Balthazar right now, he's showing that he knows how to do it. He's doing 16% hero damage. I feel like that's coming from like just three hero kills. Like he's happy to be in. Uh, <laughs> Where they just get instant burst. Yeah, they just insta give right here. Other than that, he's farming creep. So, yeah, it's pretty ridiculous yeah. the damage he's putting out. and. And again, this is definitely a team that's going to scale pretty well. You know, Midas is going to be good throughout. Obviously, gone with his presence of that hook going to be oh. powerful. Speaking of that, Boxy gets picked off. So that's a good find for Sync right there, at least slowing it down. But again, especially with the way Arachna's building here, he's even going to be going a shrunken head now, it looks like. So really, Arachna's going to want a bit of time here. Now, as I say this, he's kind of grouping up with the team in the middle lane. I'm going to try to push here. Oh, but it gets denied by Balthazar, so... Balthazar is playing really well. He really like, is. Like, really well. The spider senses from just now were... <laughs> Look at that as well. He's He's got the, the Vagabond leader standing behind the Ancients so that he can just stack it repeatedly. Mm -hmm. Like, he's creating space for himself. <laughs> it's as odd as that may sound, yeah. <laughs> Fusin? Oh my gosh, he's actually getting away down here. Wow, he's going to escape. Wow. There are two flares chasing after him, and he managed to get away by himself. The Rhapsody. Yeah, I mean, fusin has been playing the Rhapsody so well. It, it, it like the ultimates are are always on point, and it delays it just enough to let Gauntlet survive. I mean, just now Boxy did end up falling, but that was a slightly awkward location to be found in. And what I was saying about Maka, he's still doing the same thing. He's also got the post ace now, so all he has to do is keep pushing out this top lane, and he gets farm and creates space for his team. Even if he dies, it doesn't matter, because what is the Hellborn team going to do in return? Mm -hmm. Speaking of post-haste, interesting choice by Zibi here. He actually goes post-haste as well. By the way, they get slapped off to the side. Can he survive through this gauntlet? I don't know. There's Puppet Show on him. He is going to face second to Bouncer's but Bouncer gets straight out. Voodoo Puppet turn. Not enough damage of it initially. It is eventually, though, that Spider Sting, though, comes out. So Puppet Master is a little bit too long. Here's a rest, though. He's going to come back up. They can't kill the Great Zone in time. Puppet Master is back up. Hellbringer goes down. They will lock down Bouncer, oh. though. They kill him a second time, so never mind on that. Arachna standing his ground. He is still well alive. The onslaught on him. It's not going to be enough. And now the slow on a deadlift. And look at this. Sync Esports is actually winning this fight pretty well right here. Double damage root, even hat trick for Axerin. Wow. I mean, I thought PMG actually was looking pretty good there until, well, the final result. <laughs> it yeah, I mean, sink. he didn't activate Shrunken, Balthazar. Oh, and, I mean, timing. they saw the Moraxis, I think. They must have seen the Moraxis. I mean, it doesn't have a space for Veld Rot, so they must have seen him run in there. Yeah. And the fact that he didn't shrunken, 
he just got so much damage before he was able to get helped by Midas. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, I'm watching the replayer too. Again, his decision to put that Voodoo Puppet out, and then he felt like he had to kill that Parasite, which he ended up... Uh, wait, did he even kill Parasite? Yeah, he did, he did. He killed Parasite in the end, but uh, kind of put him in spot. And then the res, obviously, you know, he got back up, sure, but... He was in a pretty vulnerable spot, as we saw right there. Meanwhile, coming back to the live game, you see Conqueror now is dead. You got a token of life on Arachna here with that shrunken now finish. So, you know, sure, maybe not the most aggressive ganking build for an Arachna, but she will now start to get pretty scary. You know, her potential for items like wing bows and things like that uh, are going to be there. And, and we mentioned how her right click is actually pretty, pretty threatening uh, with the new precision, especially. So, um, We'll see how that continues to come into play. But at the same time, you do have a Puppet Master who's still farming very well here at 510 in gold per minute. It looks like Hellflower may be his yep. next choice here. I mean, it's a great item. It gives him so much damage and allows him to um, lock down Arachna. But I wonder, can he harden Carapace out of a Hellflower? I don't think so. I... I... Can be God. activated while stunned or silenced. God, yeah, it does say silence, doesn't it? Oh, oh man. my gosh, I don't know. I, I don't think know. you can. <laughs> Maybe he can. But wow. Maybe that'd right. be fun. I mean, <laughs> well, see, that's interesting. If that's the case, yeah, I don't know if this Hellfire really is that great. Actually. Unless it's, I mean, if he uses it for, I don't know, the Moraxis or the Parasite, you know, just yeah, to lock them down. It's and it's a great damage. item for DPS, yeah. But, I mean, yeah. We could have also seen, I don't know, already a symbol of rage. Just so that Puppet Master can actually survive the spider. Because that Spider-Man, it was doing so much. It, as I was saying earlier, once Arachna puts that spider on him, he just has to run. He, he just died. He's done his job, yeah. <laughs> Look at Zibby up here. He knows something's up. I, th I think I think uh, Maki's been doing this for a while, so Zibby's kind of like, I know you're somewhere up here. Where the what is he doing? <laughs> He's just going back know. and forth with the trees. <laughs> oh, I love it. He's just like trolling here, it feels like. But, but Ma like, what Maki is doing is also not very effective right now. Yeah. They're kind of playing mind games with one another. It reminds me of what Owned Me used to do. When he would play Deadwood or something, he oh, would just yeah. sit there. Mm -hmm. We've well, seen that. Kind of just playing against one another here. I mean, Hellbringer is just staying now. Again, he went the post haste, but if he's if this was his plan, you know, I guess that does make sense. So he can kind of protect, you know, the split push, but at the same time, he can TP into a, a fight if it does start to break out here. So uh, also it's Zippe. And it's remember Zippe, that yeah. time. Remember that time he played Pebbles and then got an Alchemist Bones before PK. Yep, he does his, his like that. interesting things. Yeah, he's made it very clear. He does what he just thinks is best in the moment from game to game. He never really has, like, a set plan going in. And speaking of post haste, he's going to post haste here on the Catman Champion that Parasite had, so. They're... The bots are with the deny, so they're not really getting much out of this uh, token right now. Yeah. And okay. Maka is just pressuring top lane. Like, look how low the tower is getting. Yeah, I don't know why he poured it in right there. It almost felt like that they were going to force a fight or maybe push into the base, but they're not really. They're going to work towards top, I guess. But it almost seems like that was a waste of TP from Zebe. Might as well have stayed at the top lane, actually. But he's uh, here. He's kind of hiding right now, trying to be like, oh, I'm not here. And then all of a sudden, Malphus comes out. But um, again, Legion team not falling for it. BMG playing it very safe here. Is Maki going to go for this? Yep, he is. He's going to go for the tower oh, he kill. Missed. He gets it. There's a portal key and there's a TP out. <laughs> he was like, okay, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. I got the tower. Time to get out. And oh, man, Fusen has a PK. That's so wow. huge. That's insane. When? Oh, my God. He's going to get perfect ultis off pretty much every time. Like, we saw that yesterday versus Fresh when... Oh, Morax has popped ulti. But when, when Fusen got his uh, portal key... His ultis were so fantastic. Mm -hmm. They pretty much won the game. Yeah. I, they, no, I, I do remember that. Yeah, no, he yeah. was pretty epic when it came to that positioning and the timing and everything. And again, really, Protective Melody is an interesting ability. I, have, I always go back to it. So you don't need it to be like a full duration. You just need it for like that, even the one second burst in some cases. Yeah. The, just to prevent that initial, you know, big damage or any big ability, so. 
fact he's able to now position himself very appropriately with the portal key is definitely huge. Uh, look at look at Zibe now. He's yeah, doing look. the exact same thing. How They're just going back and here? forth. I guess he just walked. I mean, here. he can just walk there. Yeah, you can walk there. <laughs> and he has a tablet as well. And now he's bottom. And now Maki is gonna keep pushing. Like, this is pretty much the strength of Midas. I think this, and he's such a strong laner. He just look how much he's farming because of this. He's almost got a sheep stick. Oh, he canceled uh -oh. his port. They want to fight here. Maybe. Did he cancel? Oh yeah, Midas, you're right. So Midas isn't here, and that, if anything, it looks like BMG was actually thinking about making a play there. But I wonder if that actually deterred them in the end. Yeah. Okay, so Maki keeps farming. He's almost got the sheep stick. I guess it was he was like, guys, I've got sheep stick and uh, 400 gold. Can we please just wait for a second? Yeah. I mean, I still think that Puppet Master is going to carry harder than Puppet Master, than Arachna, but it really depends on who finds who. Mm -hmm. um, there's a Shrunken on Moraxis. By the way, I meant to mention this earlier, speaking of Shrunken, Parasite also got one yeah. as well. He's going like the battle build, but then he has red boots. Huh. Yeah, what is that? I really don't, yeah, I don't know why he has a Shrunken, to be honest. It, it's not a team item at all. I would have loved to see a Souls Bulwark. Just, I mean, it's it's a cheap item, easy to build up, easy to push towers with, and there's no Alchemist Bones on the Legion side. So he can just get into a Ballista and be a nuisance. Of course, he has to be careful for uh, Balthazar on that Puppet Master because he's going to crit for like 700 damage or something yeah. out of Invis. Sheepstick now picked up. But Resto Stone also picked up by Zibi there. Yeah, it's coming to the point where both teams are itching to fight, I think. Mm -hmm. They're like, okay, be. I got the sheep stick, I got the sheep stick now, and then the other team's going, I got a resto stone. Yep. Oh, the potential's definitely there for this game right now, but it's just a matter of uh, who's going to kind of make the move right here. I think Congor should be coming up here in the near future. Eh, maybe, maybe like three more minutes or so. We're actually singing around. Oh. He's going. Wow. Oh no. Deep here. The sheep stick was wasted on the arcane shield. Oh, it that's a proct it. Oh, that's big. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I I say that's big, but actually, I almost want to say that's a blessing in disguise because if they sheeped him and they might have felt like they could have gone in but the whole point was bait i mean they were clearly trying to force a fight and the backup was coming here so maybe it is best that actually the arcane shield was popped and it gave them the out of let's just run away here instead but yeah but he's the only one with a pk and he was maybe 2000 range ahead of everybody else and if he was bursted down before he got any other spell off then then i mean they're fighting with one man down uh, Midas combo, of course, used, but then they'd have to already commit one Hellbring ultimate when Puppet Master wasn't even in the picture. Yeah. Nope. Oh. So, yeah. Speaking of Puppet Master, cleaning up the Ancients there. Another 2,000 gold. Balthazar just continues to keep it going. Arachna, though, she really has stepped up a bit, too. Oh, no. Boxy. GPM. Boxy is found. There's a particular melody, but Malphys comes out. Boxy's still in a lot of trouble. He is going to fall the hook. Coming up short. Fusa goes down as well. Snap particular melody. Oh, That's the actually dust. wasted. Balthazar in trouble, too. The dust, they're chasing the red stun. It doesn't lock him down long enough. Will they be able to chase it successfully? You see Arachnus coming. I mean, Miraxis is not close. He has a portal key. Meanwhile, they're pushing top lane. So they're going to force a decision out here. Balthazar pops the shirt and TP's out. And now the tower. Yep, yeah, they got to get back. So ultimately, it was pretty well played from BMG right there. Teltzuk is going to get caught, though, as he tries to get away. And that should secure a kill on him as it does. But uh, the tower. Oh, jeez. It's going to have to be denied. There you go. Yep. And, I mean, that's already an opening for a deadlift to just walk in and uh, do some crazy uh, stuff. I mean, I would have considered picking up a puzzle box like we saw yesterday, but not this game. Not versus the Parasite. No. Yeah, no. It's too risky there. He does have 2,800 gold, though, and he has a Storm Spirit, so he's been farming quite well. Yeah, he's managed it pretty good. I mean, GPM around 300 or about, I guess. Not too shabby. Only two deaths, so hasn't lost a lot, obviously. So that makes sense there. Um, 
But yeah, we'll see what uh, Teltuk does like to go for here. So as I was mentioning before, that fight kind of broke out. Again, Arachna now even a little bit more upwards of 500 GPM even uh, getting there. Has that Geometer's Bane, another 1,600 gold. Soul's Bulwark now on Slap, so mentioning that earlier, he does eventually get it here just after the Shrunken. <laughs> He's just going full on battle build. He really is. He's but they haven't been battling, so it's. Uh, yeah. The experience, though, is really in favor for the Hellborn side. Like, 9k experience, it really doesn't feel like that. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't at all. Yeah, I would not have guessed that <laughs> here for the Hellborn team at all. I mean, you look at the experience for a minute. Puppet Master is actually leading it by a bit. But I guess the supporting cast is where it really does fault. And uh, that's where they've kind of made up the room here, so. But yeah, Puppet Master, he is the driving force here, no doubt. Oh, Veldra, bottom lane. We'll see if they maybe catch somebody here. Congor is up. He is the center of attention, of course. Sink is just uh, playing all together pretty much the entire time. Ooh, Aluna. <laughs> As you say that. The hook! Aluna gets caught. There's the hook. The Gauntlet Blast, and down he goes. Look at Araka charging into the background. He's going to find a couple. Meanwhile, Moraxis gets a couple as well. Out comes Malphys. It's killed immediately by the No Fire Blade. Just purchased by Deadlift. Gauntlet will go down, though. And now the chase continues. Arachna going out oh, with thoughts. Are about to start the Voodoo Puppet, though. Down it. goes Arachna right there. The explosion. It's real. The save from the supporting cast. Protected Melody and the Storm Spirit. And oh my god, Balthazar actually lived there. In the end, he got the support when necessary. What a turn there for BMG. And now Zlapped also going to get caught. The Shark can head off cooldown. On cooldown, I should say. And he goes down as well. And everyone's up. I mean, there was no buybacks. That, that, was that, that Deadlift that, that he res? Okay. Res, res the, the, he res the, what was it, Gauntlet in that fight. And I, that was the turning point. And then Fusen with that, oh my god, that, that ultimate was yep. just insane. Like, this is what I was saying. The PK does wonders for him. It's big. I mean, the fact that Balthazar actually lived, I thought for sure he was going to die, just take somebody with him, but he managed to live, ended up killing Arachna as well. Best case scenario, oh, what a hook onto Serenia. Meanwhile, Puppet shows out as well. That should be a kill in the end. Serenia, he survives a little longer, but not for long. Zibe in the background. He has a Restless Arachna. Stone. He could have used it, though, that whole time. Raxus does stun in Arachna in the midst of it, doing some damage as much as he can, at least. Down goes Midas as well as Puppet Master. And so does Rhapsody. Down goes Gauntlet. So it looks like the Legion team maybe got a little too comfortable. Hat trick for Axarin coming out of it. It did require a couple of buybacks, including one in Arachna. But St. Kells, they, they hold yeah. and they actually win that fight coming out of it pretty decisively there. Yeah, for sure. And, I mean, Puppet Master did buy a Genjiro instead of a symbol, which I find interesting. Oh, wow. I, I, like, I don't really like the Genjiro in this game because the Arachna is just going to go on your face every single time anyways. But that being said, there's only dust on, on uh, Aluna. So if he's able to dodge the Arachna, then it is a great item. Mm -hmm. Again, where this will start of the Congo or pick. Congo's still up, and guess what? There's possibly fight around it again. You do see the buybacks of the Legion side, and here we go again. Nice job with the hard carry pace right there immediately. Out comes the stun, though, the Kala Blast, the oh, hook, the in, and down goes Arachna. Again, the protective melody coming out as well as, as Lapt was in the midst of that. He runs away, however, popping his own truck, and Masera to the side has a portal key. He's going to run back in, actually. The Hellborn team wants to try to make a play. I don't know if Masera just didn't see Deadlift right there or something, but... I don't know. That's... That was silly right there. Yeah, he just tried to run right past him. That wasn't going to happen, though. And he goes down, actually. And that could be an opening now because he's their big initiator, of course. He does still have the buyback, though. So And so does Arachna. But do they really want to use their second buybacks already? They're just going to go for the safe option and go Kong, I hope. Um... Or, or are they going to push? Oh, look at the... Yeah, Deadlift has yeah. a no fire blade. Yeah, I mean, he had a look up going into the last fight and killed Malphus right away, Saul, so. I like it. I love it. They're finally doing it. <laughs> yeah, using the onslaught here and taking out the melee reactor, at least getting him pretty low for now. Do the death grip to clear the creep wave and also maybe catch somebody. Uh, but yeah, the great thing about that that last kind of mini fight there, the Conqueror Pit 2, again, that was without Puppet Master. He just resurrected now. He's back joining them. Here we go. It's time for round three, baby. The mouth has come out, both of them. In fact, with the rest of the stuff, Puppet Master is dropping this time, and there is no saving him this time around. Going to kill that Gravestone. They do shortly after. So he is not coming back unless it's a buyback. And they clean up three. So the double Malphys that time really comes through. 
and caught the Legion team off guard there. This is just a back and forth heavyweight battle, man. <laughs> They're just nonstop here. The last five minutes or so. Yeah, I, I'm curious. Why did they push? They had a Congor open. They did force the buyback from Hexron and Macera, so they're out now. I guess I guess that's fantastic, that's but true. I mean, Balthazar bought back as well. He just bought back, yeah, I guess to prevent Congor. But I wonder yeah, also I, I if mean, that was necessary. I mean, fair enough, but I guess he just also wants to keep farming. Mm -hmm. I mean, he knows that Arachna has no buyback, so if they get kill Arachna one more time, then they have an opening. Yeah. God, these fights, it's like the last five minutes has just been go, go, go here for both of these teams. And we are going to now stop a little bit. And that, But that is a little funny how Conger is the one that kind of started all of that, and he's still up after these five or six minutes now <laughs> as both teams have kind of not been able to do it, actually. So yeah, uh, I'm sure he's going to be, once again, another place of a fight as it's kind of brewing right here. Here comes a Veiled Rot from the Hellborn side. Oh my god. For the jump. Uh, I don't know if they're going to get close enough. You see all the wards and, and whatnot around here. This middle ward of side sp uh, scouting couple. And not going to be enough to go, so. I want Deadlift to just send out cues and, you know, try and find someone like that. It does reveal after all, so if he's able to get vision with it, it's pretty huge. Yeah, Deadlift has another 3,200 gold. Again, he got that no fire blade and has a storm spirit, another 3,200. You got Midas, 3,300. There's a soul's bulwark on the Deadlift, so keeping kind of the aura out here. I, I would have liked the Sheepstick, I think. Or just some way of locking down an enemy because I'm not sure the soul's bulwark is going to do that much this game. Mm -hmm. It's all about the, uh, Malf the Malphi. Like, why not even go Resto Stone? On deadlift. Get two reses. Huh. That's interesting. <laughs> no, but it's Double super res. broken. It's like, it's like, okay, so you killed Puppy Master once, and now he's back to 100%, and then you kill him again, but then he's again to 100%. So yeah. you're effectively fighting a 7v5. It could okay, be possible. Maybe, yeah. But just knowing that that ultimate can be stopped by just simply killing the gravestone, man, it's I, I feel like that's just so yeah. risky at the same time. To it it works out like the that. it works out the best way if you have a Moira who can use the ultimate. Huh. Oh wow. On top of the gravestone, yeah. and then, or at least people who are attacking it, and then you generally get a free res. That's interesting. Huh. I guess yeah. That would be possible, but don't have that here, so. Yeah, it would be a little risky there. So It feels like this game has been, like, they've been doing the same thing the entire game now. Mm -hmm. The last 20 minutes have just been them all stuck, sticking around each other, being ready for a fight, just not sure what they have to do. I mean, Puppet Master's even scared at top lane. He, he, he pushes the creep wave and then just gets on out of there. Yep, runs away. He's still trying to finish that symbol now would be the guess here. About 2,000 gold saved up again. He still has one of his buybacks. He mentioned earlier, Rachna especially being the crucial one with no buybacks. Moraxis happens to not have any either. So a couple of big deals there. You look at Hellbringer. He actually did get a portal key to help with that initiation now. The better position for his ultimate here. But I, I can just imagine him. PK, Malphus, Resto, PK, Malphus. Yeah. <laughs> just, to get, just to get everyone. That'd be something. Look at the Legion team right here using that Were Beast to uh, also scout some vision. Where is it? It's over here. Yeah, it's sitting there. Balthazar's Whispering Helm coming into play. Yeah, seen that a couple times now. The If that could reveal Veiled Rot, then it would be a fantastic creep. <laughs> I actually think that would be a cool thing to add to the Were Beast, just because, I mean, what's the point of it otherwise? Well, just some oh. random vision. Gauntlet. Gauntlet. Axis over here and Parasite, it's they're moving up a little bit. Maki's kinda nearby. He's just hiding. He's very nearby. Yeah, this both teams are getting very close to one another here. For the first time in like <sighs> ten minutes. <laughs> I mean, Got it. If minutes, Puppet Master but... only sent one of these in right here, I feel like he could have actually maybe baited them, which is how tense the game is right now. Yeah. He really missed an opportunity, I think. Try to maybe make a play right oh, there, but Moraxis found a play going on to Toltuk right here. 
But meanwhile, in the background, you do see the stun, though, from Aluna coming out. Boxy, he's going to fall pretty quickly in the midst of this fight. More access to that Matrix. He's trying to finish off Teltuk. Out comes Malphite. Teltuk goes down. And now bounces over the shark. But the spider sticks on him. He's in trouble. They lock down Haxer and though. Haxer at half life. The Voodoo Puppet's out, but it's not enough damage. Down goes Puppet Master. Midas trying He's to back. finish off Haxer. The Voodoo Puppet's still up. It just doesn't matter though. A rack that gets very low. Did he get res? Was that what that was? Yeah, it yeah. was, wasn't it? But in the end, he dies again. And Deadlift you see Deadlift has to run. Yeah, or I guess he's just simply in base. So, yeah, that's what happened. He bought back. No, 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 no. Yeah, he bought back rest and yeah. Didn't work out, though. No, holy crap. That was an, uh, Double Malthus is just doing so much work right now. Yep, as you'd expect. <laughs> the purge. Well, that but that fight was just all in all. It was awkward. Boxy missed the initiation, and then he just got instant bursted. Yeah, it's gonna, again, we know it's gonna be a game that's, it's just such a tense game back and forth, so this is by no means a victory push or anything like that for Sync. You see Teltuk gonna pop the Storm Spirit. He does get pretty low though, and in the end, he actually is gonna go down, so eventually catching him, and this time he's not buying back. Make gonna do what he can to kind of hold them off as much as possible, but they're at least gonna lose the tower right here. Rhapsody is coming up, and so is Gauntlet, but without Puppet Master, they are missing, of course, a good amount of damage here. That could be a difference maker. They are going to jump Haxran, though. Big follow up from Boxy right there with the stub of the C Haxran. Pops the Geos, pops the Shrunken, and he just runs away as he uses the Energizer as well. So, good getaway there after that initiation, and ultimately they do run away. Balthazar did buy back there. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That's a I honestly one thought that BMG had this game, and then they just took a couple of bad fights, and. Sync is just looking so good. They they only have to wait 67 seconds for the double Malphus to be up again, and then it's pretty much a one fight. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it feels like Maki's impact with that sheep stick is very limited because they cannot jump the Arachna with it because of the hardened carapace. He just gets rid of it immediately. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure he can get rid of the ult the Gauntlet Blast though. I don't think he can. Yeah, again, it's one of those things. It's like it, it some yeah, things it, it does, some things it does. And I got the replay up right here, the last fight though. And we do see again that you see Puppet Master got the Voodoo Puppet up, does die, but here comes that buyback deadlift and then immediately resing on a Puppet Master. And now the Voodoo Puppet, again, it was still up, but yeah, not able to kill it right there. And then you see Sync coming out on top and cleaning through, but. Again, the hold from BMG, at least somewhat in their base, but requiring a buyback. I mean, Balthazar had to have maybe 10 seconds or so left on that res. That had to be coming up very shortly. So that's a really, really, really crucial buyback for being the final one and then not getting out of anything out of it. I mean, if they killed Arachna, you know, sure it would have been worth it. And they did get close, to be fair, but that nah, was a risky play, and it does not pay off. So... That really has to be the big difference maker now. I mean, at the same time, though, I mean, both carries don't have buybacks now. So yeah. you know, that's really what it is, too. It's a case of if Arachnid happens to die in, the, in a big five for whatever reason, then maybe it is going to be BMG's game still. But this is going to come down to the wire. This is just game number one, guys, here of the day. <laughs> I yeah. really think that a, um, if Balthazar can find someone and just insta-kill them with his ultimate, that that'll be the turning point. And otherwise, I think Sink is going to take this if he's unable to find anyone. Well, Congor is possible. still up, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> he started all this like 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago even. And he's still up. Here we go, though. BMG, they're going to give it a shot. And they're being spotted here, definitely. By the word of sight, but they know how crucial that token of life is going to be, especially with the buyback situations on either side. All right, really but they're easy. getting close right now. Oh, got the hooks back Fusen right there. Getting him out of a bad oh, spot. Oh, he's on the Word of Revelation. If he can go on Moraxis right now? Yeah. That's there's it. The, he doesn't have a Jeez. buyback. There's a transmit, but you can tell they're so timid. They don't want to really commit, but they're going to now. Oh, That's how it comes to Malphys. So Pouches are not in the greatest of spots. He is going to get a fallback here. You do see Boxy taking some good damage in the front lines. He's able to, he's able to kind of 
Single out Haxer and Sumwa, but more follow up now as Masera jumps in. Maka able to get away. There's that second Malphus. Balthazar gets caught now, but the protective melody again. Kind of save some initial damage right there. Is it enough? No, it's not. Down goes Balthazar, and that could be it here. You see Sink is starting to pull through now. And Teltic now even being chased out. He too is going to die. Everyone staying alive for BMG, or excuse me, for Sink. They get the hat trick on Haxer, and now they're going to go to the base and look to finish off the job. Well, that'll do it too. GG, well played. Game one going to Sink Esports. Uh, man, we knew it was going to come down to a pretty big clash there. And yeah, the, the, they were so hesitant to go on a Moraxis, and that's what kind of backfired for them in the end. Yeah. I, uh, 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 um, well, okay. I, I, it just got out of control. I, I don't know what they did in the team fights, but that's definitely what wrong. They just, they, um, they had Boxy jumping in to trying to get an initiation, but without any items other than the Saxon and the PK, he just ended up falling way too fast. So he really needed a shrunken as well. And, Arachna just completely countered Balthazar in a way because he was able to get the spider on him very, very often. Mm -hmm. And I mean, looking at Zlap's build, <laughs> full-on team items, Abyssal 